I think uh, social media is really great uh, for black women. Jamila Lemieux um, has an article in this month's um, um, Essence. Ebony. Ebony Magazine. Um, sorry, Jamila. Um, <laughs> <laughs> about um, black feminists on Twitter. Um, and the way they have been able to start conversations that weren't being, um, that we weren't having before, um, that were really important and actually bring attention to them. Um, and that's, um, that's really meaningful. Um, someone like Mickey Kendall, um, who created the hashtag um, Fast Hill Girls, uh, because she wanted to have a conversation um, about the way um, we think about black women when they are um, like in puberty, right? Like prepubescent, pubescent girls um, who um, who are accosted by older men. Um, and this, it's sort of buried, right? It's either we, we're taught not to talk about it at all, um, or you're taught that it's, you're responsible for it in some way, um, that this person who is an adult, who is much older than you are, um, and who has much more responsibility, um, that you are to blame um, because of something you wore, or the way you wore your hair, or something you said, um, to attract some sort of sexual attention from him. Uh, so much to the point that um, that we created a term for, you know, oh, that girl's fast, right? If she's maybe just exploring her sexuality in just a normal, healthy way with, with you know, friends her own age um, in a way that we find... Um, that we disapprove of, right? Oh, she's fast. It's a way of sort of dismissing her. Mm -hmm. um, and that leads to real negative consequences um, because part of what arose out of the Fast Hill Girls hashtag discussion um, was a discussion of R. Kelly, um, mm -hmm. who had basically been trolling you know, middle schools in Chicago for years. Um, yeah, middle schools and like mm -hmm. freshman high school girls. Mm -hmm. He wasn't really interested in the seniors. Um, uh, um, you know, for the express purpose of exploiting them. Um, and really like went unchallenged. Um, you know, and was able to continue to make music and be successful. Um, for years and years and years. And then um, I want to say, like, following this discussion um, about Fast Hole Girls on Twitter, um, someone at the, I want to say it was the Village Voice? Oh, yes. Um, went back and revisited the entire case against R. Kelly um, that when he'd actually been charged with, I think, child making child pornography. Um, and he was acquitted, even though he was on tape. Um, went back and talked to the journalist from the Chicago Sun-Times, um, who had sort of documented that entire case. Um, and this poor man, well, not, he wasn't so much the poor man, but these poor girls who had gone to him, you know, who would call him in the middle of the night and say, you know, please, like, stay on this story. You know, this man has basically ruined my life. Um, you know, and it just haunted him for years. Um, something like that may not have necessarily come up again um, without the power of something like Twitter and without someone who has as big a reach as Mickey. Um, you know, because I can say, like in the world of newspapers, you know, we aren't just sitting around thinking about R. Kelly right now, you know. Um, I guess he it maybe would have come up because he released a new album. Um, but even still, and, and that kind of speaks to just the makeup of newsrooms in general. Um, 
it's it's one of those stories that's really difficult because it's like, okay, well, what are we going to say about this guy? And what are we going to say about this guy that's new that hasn't already been said before? Um, and there are a million ways you can sort of build up roadblocks about having that conversation. But when you have someone <clears throat> um, who can really just forcefully kind of like thrust that into the public conversation and then make us talk about it, um, that can be really good. <laughs> Um, and I think we will be more mindful in the future. Um, I think you can see that already. And it's a little different, um, when you're talking about say Woody Allen, um, mm -hmm. because then, you know, you're not necessarily talking about black women, um, and transgressions against black women's bodies. Um, but there was definitely, um, I think very quickly um, people sort of hopped on to that conversation again, right? They, they kind of recognized right away, oh, this is something we can't really ignore. Um, and part of that was because of um, the fact that um, Dylan's letter was published on a blog in the New York Times. Um, but I think also just because there would have been a ton of angry feminists um, on the internet who would have demanded, you know, that we talk about this, and they have, um, and they've sort of kept it in the public conversation.